understand baseball, you must first examine its roots. It is impossible to pinpoint the exact creation of baseball. However, bat and ball-like games can be traced all the way to the late 1700s. Many of these games used informal rules and improvised equipment. Yet, it was not until the mid-1840s when the first ever organized baseball team was created, the New York Knickerbockers. They were the first modern baseball team and they set most of the rules that we have in place today. The first official game was played on June 19, 1846 in Hoboken, New Jersey. Although the Knickerbockers would lose 23-1 to in four innings to the New York Nine, their rules would continue to be the basis of what we have today. The 1920s would bring baseball's popularity to an unprecedented level. This era is often called as baseball's golden age. Many factors contribute to this, such as the league creating a standardized ball for use, another being the one and only, Sultan of Swat, the King of Crash, the Great Bambino, Babe Ruth. Although Babe Ruth was a celebrity throughout the nation, he did share the spotlight with other players, such as Lou Gehrig, Joe DiMaggio, and Ty Cobb. The combination of these players would bring fans to the ballpark in record numbers. Lou Gehrig, or the Iron Horse, played 17 seasons for the New York Yankees when his career was cut short by a disease called ALS, or Lou Gehrig's disease. This disease forced him to retire at 36. His farewell from baseball was his iconic luckiest man speech. Today, I consider myself the luckiest man on the face of the earth. Lou Gehrig would die two years later from ALS, but he would set records in most Grand Slams, 23, and most consecutive games played, 2,130. Hit the street, Jackie Robinson, hit that ball. It went zooming across the left field wall. Yeah, boy. The story of African Americans in baseball is one of prejudice. African Americans have been barred from professional baseball since the 1880s. As a result, many Negro barnstorming teams were created. The first nationally known professional Negro team was the Cuban Giants. Due to their success, the first Negro League was created in 1887. It was called the National Colored Baseball League. Although it was strictly a minor league circuit, this was the first attempt at an all-black baseball league, but it folded only one month into the season. Other leagues would soon follow. The National Negro League was created by Rube Foster and it was the first Negro League to last more than one season. Following the creation of the league, the Great Depression would soon follow. Although white professional baseball would falter from the Depression, Negro League baseball would flourish. It was once estimated that Negro teams would play white ones 438 times in off-season exhibition matches. Of the 438 games, the Negro teams would win 309 of them. Although African Americans had great success against white teams, it would not be until 1947 until an African American would step onto a major league field. That person would be Jackie Robinson. Jackie Robinson would be the first player to break the Major League Baseball's color line. He did this on April 15, 1947, when he started on first base for the Brooklyn Dodgers. The example of Jackie Robinson's character and his unquestionable talent challenged the basis of segregation. Jackie Robinson would go on to help the Dodgers in six separate World Series, and he was also selected for six straight All-Star Games. Jackie would pave the way not just for other African Americans, but also other minorities in years to come. The early 21st century saw new records being broken. 
In 2001, Barry Bonds would set the record for most home runs in a single season, 71. For a long time, there was a suspicion regarding the increase in hitting power, that it was largely fueled by the use of a legal steroid. The media became increasingly aware of this in 2002. Despite all the attention, there was no penalty for doping until 2004. Roger Clemens, Sammy Sosa, and Barry Bonds are just some of the players involved with the doping. But another is Alex Rodriguez. Alex Rodriguez tested positive for two performance enhancing drugs in 2007, but has denied using them in New York. However, the league has handed down a harsh punishment for the 2014 season, banning him effectively for the season. Baseball, even despite the players that have dope, will still remain to be America's. There will be no other sport any more American than baseball, which is why it's called America's Pastime. Yes, yes, Jackie hit that ball. And when he swung his bat, the crowd went wild because he knocked that ball a solid mile. Yeah, boy. Yes, yes, Jackie hit that ball.